All right, hi everybody. This will be the first of four lessons to conclude the semester. This is my first time doing such a virtual lesson. So uh, let's see how it goes. It also will be my first upload to YouTube. So for those of you that wanted me to uh, put some stuff on YouTube, well, you got what you wanted. Here we go. So uh, unit 12 is on moments. We'll be covering this unit over the scope of uh, two lessons. So this one's going to be more on the easier side where I just discuss what a moment is and do some basic calculations. It is kind of a transition week from all of us. So let's see how it goes and hopefully we have a nice smooth end of the semester. So a moment is considered what's called a turning force. And this turning force depends on two things. The force being applied and how far that force is from the point of rotation. So for example, imagine turning a door. Now when you turn a door and you open it, for example, um, it depends on where you're pushing and also how much you're pushing with. The where part is how far you are from the center of rotation or the hinge. You would find it easier to push near the uh, doorknob than you would near the root of the door. Where the hinge is located. Well, forget about doors, let's talk about uh, wrenches. So again, the formula for moment is given by moment is force times the perpendicular distance. Example one here, and you can locate these examples on Blackboard. This example here is a wrench. Now notice here that the wrench is, is subject to a force that is acting downward and uh, it's 20 pounds. Also, we notice that this force is one and a half feet from the point of rotation, which is where this bolt is. Is this thing going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, you can see in the answer, it's clearly counterclockwise, but also you can see based on visualizing how this wrench might move, it's going to go this way. So it turns out that the counterclockwise motion is in effect what the direction is for this moment or turning force. And that calculation is simply the force times the distance. And in this case, notice that there's a plus sign. So when something goes counterclockwise, we call that positive. So you'll see with the answers that you could write a plus sign or you could also say a minus sign, depending if it's counterclockwise or clockwise. In the next example, you'll see that the actual wrench will be rotating clockwise. And since it's going to go clockwise, you'll notice here that the answer is clockwise, but also there's a minus sign in this formula. In this case, I'm using a metric unit, so we have newtons and meters. So between the units of pounds and feet in the imperial system and the units of newton meters you have essentially the base unit for moment or torque in both the metric and in the imperial system if the units deviate from these values it's kind of a good idea to go to those units sometimes the units get large but you could also use uh, scientific notation if they do get out of control i want to talk more about this uh, idea of the distance now it's not just a distance, it's a perpendicular distance. So in the next example, I'm going to refer to what's called a line of action and explain that a bit further. So in example three, you'll see that it's asking you to label and draw a line of action and a moment arm. So the line of action is this invisible line along which the force is acting. And you can see that line of action doesn't necessarily go through the point of rotation. In fact, if this line of action is separated by the point of rotation at some distance d, that's not zero, then you will have a turning effect. If the line of action actually were to go through the point of rotation, there would be no turning effect or no moment. So what I refer to as d here in the diagram is what's referred to as d perpendicular at the beginning of this presentation. Continuing, we have this uh, example where a 24 Newton force has a line of action indicated in red here that is 25 centimeters away from the point of rotation P. 
So when you want to find the moment about P, you can indicate it by putting a subscript there. Now, is this thing going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, we can take a look here and see that it clearly is going to go clockwise. It's going to create a clockwise turning effect, meaning that it's going to be negative. Now, the negative sign is here as well, but in the final answer, we don't put a minus sign because the word clockwise indicates that it is indeed in the minus direction, so to speak. Also notice that the units are newtons, which is fine in terms of the metric system, but also we have centimeters. Now, it's preferable to write it in meters. If you have an answer of newton centimeters, it's not wrong, but I'm just gonna try to stick to these base units for both the metric and imperial system. Let's take a look at another example where we're dealing with the imperial system. So, this time, this force, its line of action, is uh, in, measured in inches. So this is 16 inches away from the point of rotation. Also, notice that a counterclockwise turning effect would be created. This means that the moment, which is indicated positive here, is what the answer has as well. It's very customary to use pounds and feet. So that's why I've converted the inches to feet simply by dividing by 12. Is it possible to have no moment or zero moment? And under what circumstances would that occur? Well, the next example indicates this very well. Here you have a force of 210 newtons and its line of action is going right through P. So you might look at this question and say, I can't solve the question because I don't know what D is. But in fact, you do know what D is d is zero because there is no distance offset between the line of action and this point p so there you go zero and because that distance is zero therefore the moment is also zero let's see one more example before we start dealing with some angles and uh, more advanced uh, configurations so this example is going to also generate a counterclockwise moment if you imagine the line of action here, this 45 Newton force would create a turning effect, which is in the counterclockwise direction. And recall, counterclockwise is positive. I am going to emphasize that very much in your evaluations that you indicate um, whether it is a positive or a negative moment, either as a sign or in words. In this question also, we have 150 centimeters, which I prefer to convert to meters prior to doing the calculation. So there you go, 67.5 Newton meters of moment. The next two examples uh, consider situations where you might get trapped into doing trigonometry. Now, when you look at this diagram here, you might think, oh, we have a triangle. I guess uh, got to do some trigonometry. You got to do some uh, angle calculation with uh, tan inverse to get an angle here, maybe you're here or something. But the thing is, you don't have to do that. The answer is this simple, and this is the answer that's preferred. Nothing wrong with this answer, but it takes a lot more work. This is probably how many of you may have seen this in science class in high school, because when you go to a calculus and vectors course or a physics course, you'll see the formula for torque or moment is often written as FD sine theta, where theta is the angle between the uh, radius from P to where this force is located and this uh, force vector. So it'd be like that angle there. But I would rather not use that uh, idea. I'd rather stick to what is the line of action and how far is that line of action from the point of rotation? Well, in this case, it's five feet. That's what you have here, five feet. Also, this is going to create a counterclockwise turning. That's why you see a positive sign. So the answer is just this box. What would happen if the 75 pound force was going this way to the right? Well, that's the next example. See? This time, the answer is not a marathon of algebra and trigonometry. I've written down the express version or the efficient version here. The line of action is two feet away from the point of rotation. 
So that's what this here is. That's D perpendicular. Also, this is another counterclockwise rotation. Hence, it is a positive uh, turning force or moment. The next few examples deal with uh, some interesting arrangements. And for those that have kind of studied this at some point in high school or other places, it's a lot easier than you may have thought it was in the past. And I hope that all of you see that it isn't that bad. Take a look here. We have a 700 Newton force, and we're interested in what the moment is about A. Well, the line of action's here, and that line of action gives us a perpendicular distance of two and a half meters. Also, it's gonna go clockwise. So that's why you see a minus sign. Instead of the minus sign, I prefer to write clockwise here. The units are in meters and in newtons, so there's no need to adjust anything. So basically, the product of the force and the perpendicular distance. Let's put that force somewhere else. So look at example 11. Now the force is up here. So now the line of action is this, and this is the perpendicular distance, which is 1.8 meters. It's going to go counterclockwise this time. So by turn, putting the force in a particular location on this object, it could change the answer from positive to negative, strictly on the sense of rotation that is created. In this case, if we multiply the force in newtons by the perpendicular distance in meters, you get an answer in newton meters, the standard or base unit for moment in the metric system. Let's do one more. Is it possible to place the 700 newton force somewhere so that there is no moment generated? Well, yeah, right here. Take a look. See the 700 newton force? Its line of action is going right through A. So there is no D perpendicular. D perpendicular is zero. Hence, the moment is zero because 700 times zero is zero. So here we have uh, some application questions that hopefully will allow you to relate what a moment is and quantities involved and scale to your everyday life and, and to you. So for example, this question, the answer, the final answer is that. 73.6 Newton meters of moment or torque. Now what does that mean? Well, in this case, it's the amount of turning force that you would generate if you held a 10 kilogram mass at arm's length and if your arm was 75 centimeters long. So imagine holding a 10 kilogram mass. Now 10 kilograms is 22 pounds, roughly. So imagine holding 22 pounds out at about arm's length and, and how much, uh, how long could you hold it for? And you can see that uh, uh, maybe that is a more tangible number to you now. So for example, do you think that your shoulder could do this? Could your shoulder impart a thousand Newton meters of force? Of turning force, I should say? Probably not. In any case, the calculation here is pretty straightforward. First, calculate the weight of the object. In this case, maybe it's a dumbbell or a, a bag of groceries, who knows? And then multiply that weight by how far it is from the point of rotation. Now, that point of rotation is your shoulder. So I'll just draw a very bad sketch here. So you can imagine that's the force, that's the distance. And that is the point of rotation. In the next example, we have a turning force that would be experienced by a brake in a car. So for example, let's say that a 100 pound frictional force is acting. And let's say that the radius of the vehicle is going to be 10 inches based on a 20 inch diameter. Dividing by 12 converts this to feet, giving us an indication of how many pounds feet of torque that is. Now, you could take this value and relate it to what we did earlier to someone holding a 22 pound mass at arm's length. 
and you can s safely see or make comparison or conclusion about uh, how the scale between those two different situations relate. Let's take a look at some examples of moments where we have angles involved. And these angles are not 90 degrees anymore. So in this case, it actually would be more easy to use this formula, Fd sine theta. So when you have a situation where an angle is involved and you can't just easily look at what the perpendicular distance is, you might as well just go with this formula here. Now the angle theta would be 30 degrees, the angle between the line of action and the distance or radius to this point. This formula comes from the following uh, relationship. See this distance here, this is d perpendicular. And d perpendicular is from basic trigonometry, d sine theta. So that's why these two formulas are applicable to the question. I'll stick with the former for this question. And you can see here that we have 200 pounds, two and a half feet, and the angle is 30 degrees. Now 30 degrees is a special angle, so you could probably do this in your head. Sine of 30 is a half. Uh, and one last point here, does this situation generate a positive or a negative moment? Well, in this case, it's negative because it's gonna go clockwise. And again, notice the answer here, I don't put a plus or minus sign if I write the word clockwise because it's redundant. Another example with an angle involved, using the same formula as the previous example, there's your distance, there's your force, and there's the angle that separates the line of action by that distance. So in this case, we have a counterclockwise rotation. You can even write CC here for counterclockwise. So in this answer key, if you want, you can write CC. And notice that the answer is positive as you uh, apply it to the formula. Here's one more example. We have a force that is 120 newtons and it is angled at 40 degrees with respect to the line segment AB. Now in this case, we're asked to find the moment about both A and B. In the, in the first uh, part, the line of action of the force actually penetrates A, goes through A. Because of this, the distance that separates the line of action and that point of rotation is zero. Hence, the moment about A is just zero. The units, well, the units are still newton meters, but zero times anything is still zero. In terms of the moment about B, we have a perpendicular distance, which is here. Or, if you prefer, we can use the formula involving sine. So, d perpendicular is d sine theta, as mentioned earlier. So you can either use that or that to do this question. But regardless of what you do, a sine 40 will appear in your calculation. This force is going to generate a clockwise rotation, hence the moment is negative. And instead of writing negative in the answer, we write clockwise. For homework, here's a couple of more challenging questions that you can try and the complete answers are available on Blackboard. Now this one, I think, would be in the realm of what I might ask you in an assessment, as an assignment, for example. And this one's probably more on the uh, fun side for those that want to challenge themselves with their trigonometry skill. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk. It's my first time doing a video of this type. And uh, anyway, I look forward to your feedback and your constructive uh, criticism. I hope everybody's well and safe and uh, we'll talk soon.